Welcome, I'm Ryan Costone, IUS TV softball beat reporter, and I'm lucky enough to be joined by Indiana softball head coach, Shonda Stanton, to talk all things Hoosier softball here in the studio. Coach, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. It's always great to see you, Ryan. Best media school around. Love this set. Excited to be here tonight. Thank you so much for coming in and talking with me. So starting it off, you are coming off one of the best seasons in your program's history. You return 65% of your roster. So how do you make sure your team doesn't try to measure up to what they accomplished last year, this year, and just kind of focus in on this season? Well, that's my whole job is just to manage their expectations. And we want to take the moments from last year and build that into momentum. And we're so excited. We return eight of nine starters. Uh, we uh, increased our roster with some talented freshmen. And so, I, you know, I think they're hungry and uh, everyone's excited. The expectations are high and it was nice to be outside today. We're just ready to roll. We're uh, eight sleeps away from Clearwater and it's, it's go time. I feel like this season you really have that stability in your lineup with the last couple of years you were really trying to figure it out, but now you really know who your starters are. And last year you started the season in Clearwater. You're doing it again. So how does playing teams like Oregon, Clemson, even North Carolina Central help you kind of gauge what your team's strengths and like weaknesses are? There's so many things I love about Clearwater. The weather is one, right? Uh, to our leadoff classic is hosted by our coaches association. So they do a wonderful job. It's a coveted tournament. And then to come out of the gates and play Oregon, who's gonna be a future Big Ten member, top 10 program traditionally. Uh, Clemson on day two, who's gonna be a top five program. They got one of the best in the nation and Valerie Cagle. And so right out of the gate, it's nice to be able to have that measuring stick and see where you stack up. We're gonna be challenged early and often. Uh, and then the rest of the field's a great weekend too. And so, you know, our group, it's about getting outside. Uh, we do have the luxury of knowing our lineup. You know, pretty much the starters are, are penciled in pretty, pretty solidly, whereas in the past, you got one or two and you're filling holes and trying to figure out the rotations. So I think we're in good shape going down. It's about playing loose, playing free, being fast and furious. That's kind of our goal this year. And I think above all else, the power of contribution, understanding that. I think we have a lot of individuals that achieved at a high level. And so they wanna follow that up this season because they are veterans and returning, but it's gonna be all about doing your job and starting in your role to help the team win, not necessarily just be about our individual performances. Yeah, not only um, trying to continue that greatness from last year, but moving it on to this season and using their time in Clearwater, but also you guys, are playing eight teams on your comp on your schedule that were in the NCAA tournament last year. So what would you say that um, your the, the matchups that you're most excited for in the non-conference if you had to look at your schedule past Clearwater? Sure. Well, we always enjoy matching up regionally with Louisville. You know, that's kind of a, a rival for us. And, you know, we'll go to their place this year. We always switch home and home, you know, with them. Had a chance to get the best of them last year, you know, but it's a great matchup, a marquee game. Notre Dame is another one, right? You know, the Big Ten and ACC are always fighting uh, for those uh, additional at-large bids. And so, you know, another, and being an in-state opponent, uh, they got a great ball club up there. Deanna's done a nice job. Look forward to going down to Gainesville. They got a beautiful facility. The weather is going to be great. A former pitching coach of mine is the pitching coach down at Florida. And so looking forward to that. Going to Arizona, man, that place, they pack it. It's an older crowd, uh, so they can tend to be a little bit quiet and feisty at times, but um, it, it's a beautiful facility. The weather will be great. And, and so, you know, I, I think we have a, a great mix in terms of RPI of games that we, we got to take care of business and win games that will be stretched and challenged and they won't hurt if you lose. Uh, and so I, I think the schedule as of last year is pretty similar. I think they'll really be prepared for going on the road in the non-conference when you're going before, or going on the road during conference, during non-conference when you're going to Florida, mm -hmm. Arizona, all of those historically really good programs. Bree Copeland and Taylor Minnick, they both had outstanding seasons last year. They're named um, top 100 players by D1 Softball coming off of all their All-American campaigns. But what is something that you would say they improved upon from last year? Right. Their growth as humans and as people. I, I tell you, there I don't know many programs that can say they returned two All-Americans to their lineup. None in the Big Ten, but us. Um, you know, some of your more storied programs do have that. And so that's exciting, right? So we know uh, as far as ability, it's great to have that in your lineup. But when you talk to the, about human beings and to watch their growth as young women, it's been so impressive. And, and we talk all the time about, you know, character drives winning, you know, the things that are gonna inhibit your ability to maximize your potential. You know, they're the, the human element. 
um, to how you operate. And so, you know, fear of failure, confidence, uh, selfishness, you know, those are the things that impact your ability to win or lose. And so to watch their growth and development to understand that they do need to perform for our program. And I think challenge on, they're ready, they're confident. Um, but I, I, I think the growth in them understanding that it's about the team as well has been fun to watch. Part of the other um, thing that your team has is 10 other, or 10 total um, upperclassmen, mm -hmm. including Taylor and Bree. So how much are you gonna rely on their experience and leadership going through this season? Well, it's a welcome change. You know, the last couple of years, we've been heavily starting freshmen and sophomores. And, you know, there's nothing like ex experience. Now, experience can be evaluated. It can be learned. It doesn't have to be your own individual experience. And I think that's why I've been, we've been successful last year as well, even with the youthful lineup. But it, it's going to help tremendously. You know, we just talked today about our seniors. I think they're doing a great job. We have four of them. They're really stepping up in different leadership uh, capacities. They all lead in their own way. And then that junior class is super talented. And we talked to them about really meshing as two classes because we have a great young group as well that we want them to be able to just model kind of a monkey see or a lion do uh, of what they're seeing from the juniors and seniors. And so, you know, I'm pretty fired up about the trajectory of this program, the momentum that we received last year, and we would just want to keep going up from here. It's been fun to watch that junior class grow up as I've been covering the team. And last year you had a storied freshman class coming in. This year you also have a pretty good freshman class and uh, some transfers. So who would you say if you had to pick one? I know it's going to be kind of hard to say that you're most excited to see them get on the field. In terms of freshmen or the freshmen. team? Freshmen. Yeah. Gosh, that is hard to pick. But... You know, right now I think Alex Cooper is a special talent. You know, she's got five tools, and when you look at the game, the area that we're going to have to continue to grow since she is only a first year is that sixth tool, that mindset, that confidence, that understanding that you belong. But she's right up the road here from Mooresville, a coveted athlete. A uh, number of uh, big-time programs wanted her. She chose to stay close to home. I think we had built relationship with you know, both Alex and her family through the years, and that paid dividends. That was the fruits of our labor. But you're going to see her at third base uh, when, when Bree's on the mound. You're going to see her up the middle at second. I tell you, when you get out there and watch her and Benny getting balls up the middle, it's like watching a defensive clinic. It's something special. She's an elite talent there. And um, she also can pitch. And so we have a veteran pitching staff, so I don't know how we'll utilize her, but we will get her some uh, any and she has an uncanny ability to get some swings and misses and she got a lefty stick uh, which is nice to see as well so awesome talent look forward to watching her grow and develop in our program as well Hoosier through and through I remember during the exhibition seeing her hit it out of the park yeah. I'm expecting a lot of more of those this season but if you had to describe team 51 the 51st edition of Indiana softball in three adjectives I know it's gonna be kind of hard but how would you describe them well, Emma asked me that question today, but she only gave me one word. Okay. So thank you for giving me a couple more words because, yeah. you know, I, I kind of get a little wordy. <laughs> but uh, talented. This is a talented group, right? And we've got to be able to bridge that gap from, you know, potential to achievement because the talent is there. So I'd say that. And then Fast and Furious, that's going to be our group. You know, we want to, on the mound, especially with the new pitch clock, we want to be a group that just pounds that zone, you know, uh, pitches to contact. So we can get off the field pretty quick so we can go do what we do well. And that's it, right? We want to score a lot of runs. We put up almost 400 runs last year. And so I expect offensive explosion like that this year and for that to be our identity. So we want to be fast and furious as well. With returning so many players, I think for sure that could be a possibility. But coach, thank you so much for coming in. That's unfortunately all the time we have today. But make sure to follow the IUS TV softball beat this season on IUS TV sports on all social media platforms to stay up to date with all things Indiana softball.